Hello, hello. This is Johannes Wotry from Hold to Run. Today we will make a clean, small sample app to uh, demonstrate and show how you can use these tab pagers, as you can see in here. This is from an actual app and it's called ServerDoc. It's an API, con constant API testing application and it painfully needed some way to organize the multitude of different kind of a server test items. As you can see, we were querying data objects, we're querying uh, numeric objects, and we're querying web objects. And there can be even files. So now we can create different kind of tabs with the scrollable tab row and pager and that way we can categorize these tabs to have different items as you can see in here let's assign this into the test tab like so it's now there and we can always have kind of a main tab which holds any any of the items with this kind of a tab item you can also you can create and delete this is dynamic format this is something you have to go through by yourself but uh, in the let's call it simple application we can create fixed scrollable tab row which will have a certain fixed amount of items and then it's gonna just give us a pager which holds which we can shift between these tabs so i like it this enabled the server doc application to have these item collections underneath their custom dynamically created tabs which the user can now assign these items into go back to main or into test and that's it perfect so before we code the simple small application for the scrollable tab row, if you like what I do, you can go into holdtorun.com and check it out what I'm developing actively currently. It's the ServerDoc application. If you like it, you can download it and test it directly in the Google Play Store. Okay, let's start. Okay, here we have the clean uh, activity, main activity, which just displays Android. Hello Android, as you can see up here. Now let's prepare so that we can implement fixed amount of items for a scrollable tab row. And then we want to show below certain amount of uh, items or one item through a pager which changes animates its position to the next page via the tab click requests or swipe so first i think this is going to be a very plain app so let's just prepare so that we will have a column which can hold stacked items like so and let's ensure they are aligned at the top like so we want to use this greetings android and we can always pass in let's say a different page number to display the animation between the pages via tap clicks and swipes so now we copy paste the tab row and we modify that to fit our need now this is from our actual code in here we need this kind of a tab scrollable tabs let's put them here now we have a lot of errors in here 
let's say this is going to be fixed amount of, of tabs, but let's ensure we have a lot of them up here so that it kind of uh, overflows the width of the screen. So it also demonstrates the means to use scrollable tab row. Maybe, maybe we have, let's make more. That should do. Okay, seven. Now we are passing in. This is already usable via Jetpack Compose. So if you create Jetpack Compose based project for, for your UI graphics, you can read this as is scrollable tab row. It should exist in, in the Compose libraries already. So we have collection tab Attempts tab one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, and eight. Okay. Now, there's one bad thing about this that I don't like. It doesn't use IDs, which is kind of a universal way to recognize the item despite its position. And at least for now, it's purely index driven. So if you make it non-fixed, meaning you can dynamically add and remove items, you'll bet, I'll bet you're, you're going to end up in exceptions due at the out of bound, index out of bound exception. So see here, selected tab index. Now use this kind of a guard, mean of collection tabs count or pager page dot value. Now we don't have yet this mutable uh, uh, state object. So let's create these ones. What's the pager page? Uh, we don't have that. Let's see what kind of a item was this pager page. Need to see that from up here. Okay, we have let's let's copy paste. That was just purely int. So we have pager page. Okay, that's going to be the one that holds the index of the current page. So when dealing like this, if we ever remove dynamically objects from this collection of tab or add, it's always going to ensure that it's, it takes the minimum from these both and it should not end up into the error exception of index out of bounds. Okay. What else do we need? So there's not going to be any functions behind this. The only thing we're going to do is to assign new index. Okay. Sorry. This was kind of a actual app use case to have a fixed index zero. We don't use that. We just always create tabs based on the amount of the items in the list. Okay. So let's do it like this in here. I had to use plus one, plus one shift to the index because I had so called fixed main at zero index this time. There is no fixed zero index always come, everything comes from this list of strings. Okay. Now we have we create as many as in the list are. When we click the pager page gets a new value of index to be shown. And it should get the selected tab index value via that recomposition value here. And we assign a tab name. Let's call this tab name text into the tab so it gets the tab one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. And when should the tab 
be selected, it should be selected when the index is at the exact index point. So, hmm. Item show at tab ID. Now we need to query if the pager state is at the index in this simple app. Okay, now we don't have the pager state yet. So how did we create that? Let's go and see. Pager state, we need that. Yes, it was created as so. So now we are purely making index based statements in here. Remember pager state, we are missing something in here. Hmm, we are we have to implement some dependencies. We'll be back in a minute. Okay. So quickly going through the dependencies. I didn't need to add any specific custom add-on implementation. It's purely in the standard compose libraries you see in here. Only thing I had to do was to update the latest Compose UI version to 1.4.1. And now with the standard setup while creating new Compose project, we are able to reach the remember pager state. Okay. And this is still experimental. So we have to accept the experimental opt-in for the activity class. Okay. Where this composable resides. And now we can make the comparison if this tab should be selected or not. And this is purely index comparison driven currently, non IDs. So now we can ask from the pager state dot pagers state dot current current page. So if our index of this item, list item, matches the uh, the state of the current page from the page state, then we also indicate this tab as highlighted and it should animate that to be the selected tab and the page. So then they are matched. Okay. So we don't have any pager yet. We have we should now have a tabs currently which don't pretty much yeah they show the text name so let's try at this point what what does our app do of course it doesn't work hmm i have no idea what this means so i do have errors in the dependencies i'll be back okay let's try again run the app we should see a row of tabs and they are changing the state. And as you can see, we have plenty of items and it is scrollable. And then we have some overlapping additional stuff over here. So now I want to change this so that this greeting will be shifted as a page in down here, which is gonna, so I don't know, hello, tab one, two, three, four, based on the index that I'm assigning in here. And in addition, if I swipe, it should work also. So sorry about the uh, just a second ago. It's always when you start with from scratch, nothing simply works. Okay, let's build our pager and use this inside of that. Now let's take a look what how did I do that in the actual app? So in here we have pager state <clears throat> and some animate to scroll page. Where are we using this and how? We have 
horizontal pager. That's exactly what I want to use based on the pager state. So right after the scrollable tab row. Nice. Okay. Scrollable tab row and inside the same column, they should stack nicely on top of each other. Then our simple text demo, we can pass that inside here. And I don't do any customized stuff anymore. Greetings, Android, let's say tab index. Now we should have a text hello Android and index number. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Horizontal pager. Let's see what we have. We are assigning the pager state. So this is actually that holds the state of the page that we are showing down below in here. And we, in addition, we ch do change the pager page value. We should also, whenever we click animate pager state, animate scroll page to value of that new index. So this will actually animate, ensure that our horizontal pager, it should shift with an animation into the next page. And right after the animation is done, this page state will update its new page. And when it matches, we should get a selected value true in here. And the tab should also switch position. Okay, I think that should work. We cannot launch this without a coroutine, so that's why we need to add well, scope is remember coroutine scope. So with this we can launch an animation inside a thread like so. Okay, I have no idea what will happen. Don't mind those plus ones. Don't mind that text. It should work unless I have a maybe it should be minus one. Let's see. In this demo. Okay, we have hello Android text. We are clicking hello Android text one, two, three, four, tab five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we are showing index versus number. Okay. Let's change these into in the, so that it shows the index numbering instead of logical numbering. Six, seven. Oh, it, it updated as online. So now we can see I press tab one. Let's go a little bit bigger. Tab one, tab, sorry, tab three, zero, one, two, three, four, and it's paging below. It should also now take swipes. It's not taking swipes. Why is that? Let's finish that one too. Hmm. I need to make it swipeable. Oh yeah, here. User scroll enabled. In my actual application, why I don't have these swipes is just because of one simple reason. This application in here has already a lazy grid down here and I'm using internal swipe detections. So maybe maybe it could be possible via uh, nested scrolling or somehow to make it possible so that 
we could also consume swipes but now it is swiping detection it is reserved for this function but clicking the here tabs is all also perfect so let's go back and we have changed we can now change the how it should function user scroll enable did it accept our oh yes it did we're nearly done as you can see it's consuming swipes already but it's not changing the state of the tab selection so let's fix that one okay so it's kind of a after swipe update tab did not update its selected page so i have an idea that we could use launched effect to detect immediately after the page stayed animation is done we should get value of current page as a result after the animation is done and our launched effect should recompose our pager page to the same selection like like this in here so launched effect is a it's kind of a monitoring result to be launched in any compose mutable state change that we have valued to be monitored so now as a key one our page state when it when this composable mutable state value changes it gets recomposed into a new value after the um, assigned a new fresh page value after the animation is done this should kick into the play and we should synchronize our selected page to be the same and it should change this white line also to a correct position so let's see let's restart the app so click is working swipe is working perfect okay guys this was how you can easily implement scrollable scrollable tabs into your app and uh, to make it really cool and usable instead of making fixed list item based tabs try to make dynamic tabs so that user can actually create anything he likes to as i have in here let's say abc we created new collection it doesn't have items yet but we can then assign any item we like for that tab like in here and now we have organized collection of test items so that's a goal for you to try to uh, implement just be careful with the index out of bound exceptions as this does not use ids to track the items so just a heads up whenever you change the amount of your tab list items ensure to be careful to synchronize the real number with the min of this acts as a safeguard for now and hopefully in the future this will be id based tracking of the items in the tabs instead of index okay that's all we'll be back